2011 marks the 100 years of British decision to shift India's capital from Calcutta to New Delhi. What we now call New Delhi really came into existence after 1911, when King George V, during his visit to Delhi, declared, almost to the surprise of many in his government at that time, that the capital was to be shifted from Calcutta to Delhi. So what was Pandara Road and that whole officially, which had sort of newly developed, so to say, Many years, many years. What was life like there? If you work with the evolution of the city, you can actually look at it through. Uh, you can see the way the center of gravity of the city shifts in terms of its cinema models. You know, when I was uh, in the 1960s, when I was a young boy, we went to see movies in Ritz and Minerva in Kashmiri Gate or Bolcha in, in Darya Gan. One of the strangest things about Delhi is that it seemed unable to keep uh, the neighborhoods and institutions in its past uh, past or respect. It's almost as if, um, as the center of gravity shifts, the past is abandoned. I mean, their history seems to be a history of getting away uh, from where it was. I think this, this mobility of the cities is a very old thing, and you have descriptions from travellers describing how the previous city had become very declassé and exactly the same with the cinema halls that you're describing. Yes, Dutch and Delhi is still um, alive, but it's a very odd city centre. Most city centres, when you go further in, it gets more crowded. Uh, you, you, go, you, you, know, you go to Manhattan and, and it's, it's, every square inch is, is, is used, every <coughs> most expensive real estate is in the centre. And the further you go out, the more suburban it gets and the more spacious the gardens and, 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 and you have swimming pools and so on. Uh, in Delhi, the, kind of the, the big spacious lawns and gardens are all in Akbar Road and Narangza Road, right. right in the centre. The kind of a sleepy but sort of active life that Delhi has from 1857 until it becomes the capital. Could you just give us a vision of the city before? To use uh, an expression or phrase that you see of Andrew's point, this is the period of the Delhi Renaissance. Uh, and it, in, in every sense of the term, uh, I think uh, this expression conveys the, the vibrancy and the vitality and the dynamism of Delhi society. But the real question is, I mean, how does such a short time, really, less than a century, how does that transform that city into uh, this very volatile place where uh, communal clashes become so very, so very widespread? So what I'm trying to do is to, to, to make a plea for, uh, for the recovery of that tradition, the intellectual tradition. To take your point on about intellectuals, I think Delhi is such a Sarkari image in our century, in the last century, um, that one forgets this idea of, the, of Delhi as a, as a center of literary excellence, of intellectual excellence. But the Baniyas of Delhi had a very strong presence in the city, the merchants, the traders. And they had an ethos, a lifestyle, a kind of culinary, styles of writing, styles of celebrating festivals. And it is the Baniyas of Delhi who, in the years after 57, dominate the city's landscape. The, the city was dotted by the imprint of the work of its business community in other areas. They don't make businessmen like that anymore. <laughs> I mean, one of the reasons why they establish uh, these schools and, uh, and colleges, one of the reasons why they publicly advertise their commitment to, say, female education, is partly because it's also a modernizing credential. The transformation from that Delhi to the one we have today, which is now a properly national country, it's like it's moved from being Washington New York. So now it is a, a, a place where you're likely to meet kids from all over India. For the first time in the history of modern India, Delhi is a much, much more advanced, enlightened and cosmopolitan city than Bombay, you know, which is actually now a kind of a backward, decrepit hey, sort of world, you know, you know, so. I think the great difference between Bombay and Delhi, uh, contrary to what you were saying about Delhi's preeminence, is that uh, I think in, in Bombay uh, there's a proper sense of metropolitan indifference. You, if you were to drop dead in the street, people would step over you. I mean, nobody would attempt to do anything else. But in Delhi, they'd actually pick your pockets before moving on. The, the thing about Delhi is like, you know, there is a... As the editor of Delhi Urdu Akbar in 1857 said it, you know, there's a problem with Delhi's air and water. <laughs> the moment these soldiers who have otherwise put massive armies to rout, they come here, the moment they have one laddu at the Ghantawala shop, and do one round of chandni chalk, lose all urge to fight and become completely useless. You know. So, on that note,
ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs>